Yeah, 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 yeah. I took the option of not no, having I mean, them. I've been given the opportunity to talk for possibly the greater part of an hour, and I have a lot to say. And I'll try to be as brief and as succinct as possible. But the subject of where are we going to go from here, which has been turned into the title, The Forms of Freedom, is something that has been on my mind now for literally decades. It just isn't 1985. And it's been particularly the case in the past few years, where I have been obliged to think about the problem from my own experience and from a very long background on the left. Where to begin? The big problem I think most of us really confront, or at least the problem that I usually encounter, is the fact that people feel disempowered. History has taken a very nasty turn, and let's be frank about it. We have gone from a world, how far back depends upon how far back you want to look, I can even go back to the 1930s, where people felt they had control over their lives. You lived in neighborhoods, you lived in fairly extended families, even if you lived in a city like New York and certainly also in San Francisco. You had richly articulated neighborhoods. You had very strong mutualistic support systems. We hung out on the corners of our candy stores, which were our public fora, where we could have discussions of all kinds, whether they were personal or political. There was, when I was younger, a very intense political life it isn't so much that television has brought people into the house and kept taking them out of the streets. It's that even if people at that time, or let's say more particularly now, wanted to go out in the streets, they wouldn't know what to find. That's the problem. We have an enormous amount of corporate centralization, an enormous amount of state centralization, an enormous amount of gigantism, a tremendous amount of homogenization, and not only because of television. It's because something has happened, especially since the 1950s, which is very strategic. And that is that the buyer-seller relationship, the commodity relationship, has begun to invade our lives. You could go home from work, and when you came home from work, you came into a pre-industrial society in many respects. You had your parents around, and you had your grandparents around, and you had several generations all intermingled with each other. People were not that concerned with making money off each other. They didn't invest in their family. They didn't buy ideas. They lived a real community life, however much it was undergoing decay. And even though you had a radio set that could hold you in the house, no less than a television set could today, People wanted to go outside and communicate with each other. They had developed the habits of discourse. They had developed the habits of intercourse, which came from another age. So that when you went home from your factory, which was a realm of capitalist production, or if you went home from your office, which was a realm of business and commerce, you could still come into an intimate realm of personal life, of social life, of neighborhood life. And that realm, as it were, was, was a place where you recreated yourself through support systems. I don't mean a place of recreation. I mean a place of a recreation, reproducing yourself and your personality. And through this intimate contact, it was possible to become a stronger individual even though you lived in a more collective environment. <coughs> that world has been eroded and subverted steadily by the encroachment of the factory of the office, of the supermarket, into our own personal lives and finally into our own heads.